For the 42nd time in Jacket football history, the Jackets fell on Saturday to Washington and Jefferson 33-14. Later on in the show, Joe Smeltzer will sit down with Matt Durgan and our analysts will be in, as always. I'm Dylan Cleland. I'm Jack Hillgrove and it's time for Jacket Sports Weekly. <laughs> We're back on JSW, and Jack, let's talk about this football team now. They finished the season 4-6 and six overall, 4-5 and five in the PAC, doubling their win total from last season, but Saturday's performance, not, not a good one. Yeah, and as I mentioned in the opener uh, of the show, Dylan, the 42nd time Washington and Jefferson has beat Waynesburg in the history of the D3 backyard brawl. Waynesburg's only come out on top five times, and rightfully so. Uh, head coach Mike Serrani uh, in the last few seasons or in his tenure has built uh, – a D3 powerhouse. They're going to go back to the NCAA National Tournament this year. Uh, they're going to go against the Center College Colonels from Kentucky um, in the opening round of the D3 National Tournament. Um, they're just really good, uh, and that's what I wrote down in my takeaways. WJ is just really good. Andrew Wolf, six receptions for 127 yards and two touchdowns. He's the leading receiver in the PAC. Uh, and talking about uh, in the running game as well, E.J. Thompson and Jordan West, you can argue that they're the D3 version of Pitts, Quadri Olison, and Darren Hall. Um, to, uh, Thompson, 186 yards and a touchdown, and West, 138 yards and two touchdowns. So this football team uh, went up against a really, really tough president squad. But as you said, Dylan, um, doubling its win total uh, over the last season, um, two last year, four this year, and a couple of hard-fought victories as well. Uh, you talk about that Geneva game, 10-7 uh, final score. It was sloppy in the beginning, but Waynesburg did what it needed to do to come out on top. Um, Teal on the road, and you know, just to name a few of those victories. And you can kind of go back to that first game against Muskingum, where Waynesburg looked to be in control for the better part of the football game and Muskingum kind of just slipped away with it and if Waynesburg comes out on top you're 500 and we could be talking instead of talking about wrapping up the season we could be talking about a TCAC bowl matchup coming up soon so a couple other takeaways statist from a statistic standpoint not too disappointing Tyler Perone did have an interception in the first half but he was 17 of 32 with 107 yards Chad Walker he found his groove mid-season and he was able to carry that through the end 15 carries, 102 yards. And then Jordan Taylor, the freshman, got to give him a shout-out. His first collegiate touchdown, uh, rushing for 12 yards on eight carries. Yeah, and talking about that Waynesburg rushing game, and we'll get into the offense a little bit more, that could be a really solid one-two combo. Um, Chad Walker being the elusive one-cut back that he is, and you complement that with Jordan Taylor, who's a hard-nosed downhill runner that can power his way into the end zone from five yards out. And we saw it, unfortunately, for the first time in the last game of the season, but that's definitely something that he can build upon uh, in the rest of his jacket career. And, you know, talking about next season, just a little bit before Alex Lyons comes in studio, um, Alex Paulina is the only one on that offensive line that leaves. So that's four offensive linemen coming back and a majority of their starters. I'll be in a little bit later to talk about that, but we're going to touch upon the men's and women's cross-country teams who participated in the um, Mideast Regionals. We'll start with the men, who placed 32nd out of 52 teams. Uh, Matt Collum came in first for the men uh, with a time of 28-49, 142nd overall. Yeah, and Matt Durgan, who finished second on the team, 174th with a minute of 29-16. A common thing is a lot of these guys are finishing right within each other. And then the other thing that jumps out, which we've talked about all season long, is the sophomore power. Matt Collum, Matt Durgan, Nate Jesslin, Kyle Warmbean, Jordan Payne, and Matt Mansfield, six of the seven runners that participated in this uh, regional or sophomores. And so that's encouraging that these guys are going to turn into kind of the leadership role heading into next season. Yeah, absolutely. And um, Joe Smeltzer will be sitting down with um, Matt Durgan later on in the show, who placed second uh, for the Jackets, 174th overall. You know, these guys are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the next couple of years. Because, you, know, you combine that, um, the sophomore class becoming juniors and a majority of that team being well represented by the sophomore class and a little bit of the chip on their shoulder that they have 
you know, with the, all the success that the women's team has had for the last three seasons winning the President's Athletic Conference, you combine that with the power of this young sophomore class, I think this team could be, you know, especially led by the sophomore class, a force to be reckoned with, maybe not next year, but as a, in the senior season. And now talking about the women, a little bit of better result, 15th place as a team, uh, Aubrey Wingart, the freshman, freshman standout, um, she placed 40th out of 341 competitors. She placed first on the jackets. With a time of 24 minutes and 11 seconds, and again, another common theme with the women, two other, two other finishers right behind her, Gloria Reed, the freshman, and sophomore Becca Volts, they both were in the 24-minute range as well. Uh, unfortunately, no one able to advance for the men or for the women to nationals this season, but again, we're seeing these young girls, and now we're seeing freshmen doing it for the women's team. Yeah, absolutely, and on, like you said, how unfortunate it is that none of these uh, women or the men advanced any national competition, but they're going to can translate that success, hopefully, especially on the women's side, uh, to the indoor track season. Uh, the track becomes shorter, the events are a little bit different, and you don't have to deal with that outside weather. Towards the end of the season, um, it gets a little bit colder, has to hinder your running abilities, I'm sure. You take that indoors, nice room temperature, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm sure. Um, that could you know, translate to some more jacket women running success as well. And now we're gonna talk about the wrestling team for a little bit before we head to a break. And there's, you can't talk about the wrestling team and just not talk about Jake Evans to start. I mean, the guy is just the most dominant heavyweight wrestler in the country. And he proved it last season, winning the D3 285-pound class national championship. And then um, over the weekend, he was the heavyweight champion in the Invitational three first-round pins, which is... And very impressive, to say the least. Yeah, it is. I mean, when you take into consideration a period in wrestling is only a couple of minutes, and you're able to do that in that time frame, uh, not once, but three times, he, he's, a, he's a dominant factor. And if you're Coach Ron Headley, you love to have this guy on board. And he's picked up right where he left off. He did it last week in the Clarion Open, which had Division One wrestlers there. And then he did it again this past weekend. Uh, the team itself, though, the at the Washington and Jefferson Invitational, finished fifth. Behind four other teams, W&J finished third. Thomas Moore no longer in the PAC. They finished fourth. They were at that Invitational, so some familiar faces at the tournament, but nonetheless, the Jackets take fifth. Some other notable uh, names, Zach Mackle in the 157-pound weight class. He took second place. He upset Ryan Luth of W&J to get to the finals, and then he lost there 7-1. to one. He was out last season. Um, for a little bit, but he he's uh, someone to look at this year as well. Another guy that you might know if you follow Winsburg Wrestling, Ken Burrs, 197 pounds. He won his opening match and then he lost. Uh, he was eventually upset in the semifinal, but overall, these guys a decent performance at W and J. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk about um, the freshman contribution as well. A couple of sixth place finishers, one of them being a freshman, that's Dylan Winters. Uh, he placed in sixth in his respective weight class, and then junior Matt Lascola as well, somebody who's contributed for this jacket wrestling squad. It's going to be really fun to watch these guys throughout the season. You know, obviously us being as communication students, um, working the PAC wrestling championships for the Waynesburg University Sports Network, and that's really, I don't know about you, but like my first time watching wrestling in person and watching guys like Ken Burrs and Jake Evans sort of go through their progressions and be as dominant as they were. And Waynesburg eventually won the President's Athletic Conference on its home turf. And I would expect the same result, and I would even go as far as saying that um, Jake Evans can expect the same result as well um, in the national ranks. And it would be nice to see Ken Burrs as well kind of elevate his game, another PAC champion last year, maybe advance uh, in the national ranks as well. So it's going to be really fun to watch these jacket wrestlers throughout the season. A lot of depth. Uh, two freshmen, three sophomores, two juniors, and a senior also picking up one win in that Invitational this weekend. When we come back on Jacket Sports Weekly, Alex Lyons will be in to give a final recap on the football season. We'll be back. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly. I'm Jack here with Dylan and now Alex Lyons to discuss the football season. Alex, they doubled their win total from last year. A little bit of a disappointing loss to end the season, but there's a lot to look forward to heading into this offseason and then heading into next year as well. Yeah, definitely. It's a team you really didn't expect much out of coming into this year, but come out with four wins inside the conference. 
had a chance to even have maybe five, six wins overall. They had a chance to beat Bethany. They had a chance to beat Muskingum. Should have beat Muskingum to start the year, but you know it's a couple of what ifs. You return Chad Walker next season, who really started to emerge towards the end of that this coming this season just ending. Walker in that last game, 102 yards. So. When he first came in, um, head coach Rick Shepis at the time said he was one of the most explosive backs the program was ever going to have, and it really took us a while to see it. Now coming into this year as a leadership role, I'm excited to see what he can do next year. Even though I won't be personally able to see it in person, I'm excited to see what he can do for that Jackets football team. Yeah, as uh, we touched upon Chad Walker in this offense, returning a lot of its starters, Alex Paulina, the only one uh, on the offensive line leaving. Now there's a couple of guys. Uh, that have a possibility of leaving Tyler Perrone, Jawan Jones, based on you know obligations and early graduation. But assuming those guys stay, we're looking at a very explosive offense in the President's Athletic Conference next season. Yeah, that would be absolutely huge to get those guys coming back. Um, if you can return Perrone, Jawan Jones, who is by far the most athletic and dynamic player on that offense and really just shows his ability as a playmaker. We saw it throughout the season, making big plays, especially in that win against... Geneva making some huge catches in that game and making some big returns. So if you're somehow able to get him to come back, get your quarterback to come back, who really improved, in my opinion, on aching down the turnovers. That was his big issue, and he kind of really righted the wrong in there in this season, and it really helped out with the Jackets' offense getting better this year. But the defense, the secondary is something I'm going to be worried about next year. Justin Wilco gone, Andrew Brinsick gone, so... It'll be tough to see what they can do next season without those two. Al, thanks for covering the football team all season long. When we come back, Dakota Kiefer will discuss the women's basketball team here on Jacket Sports Weekly. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Back on JSW, joined by Dakota Kiefer, our women's basketball analyst. And Dakota, this team was ranked fourth in the PAC preseason polls, and Friday night was the opener. What are the takeaways, and is that the right spot for them? I'm going to be honest. I have no idea how they were ranked fourth in the polls. I mean, they finished fifth last year, and that was with probably the best women's basketball player of this university's history, and Addie Knetzer, 1,000-point scorer, 1,000-point rebounder. They lost McKenna Drazik and Rachel Wang, and all three of them were the leading scorers on the team, respectively, and they're gone. And now they have to look towards a younger group. This is a very young team. Against Carnegie Mellon, Sam Jones rolled out a very young lineup with three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior, and Aaron Joyce. And um, if you count Monica Starr, because she is out now with a stress fracture in her back, that's the top four leading scorers from last year just not playing now. And it's going to be very difficult for them to manage without Monica Starr and in general without those three from last year and there's nothing they could do about that but to go in that Carnegie Mellon game I was there and in the first half the team looked explosive uh, three-point shooting was like on it was very good they they seemed to make every three-pointer they attempt, attempted in the first half Aaron Joyce made one of the crazier three-pointers I've seen um, falling down and leaning back and I mean, they looked really good, and Andrea Orlowski was another one that looked really good in that game. She nearly put up 20 points, nearly had a double-double. She looked good, and as a sophomore, that's something you really um, like to see because moving forward, she can move forward as a leader this year and even in the next year, and then who knows what she can do in a senior year. But they had a 23-11 to lead after the end of the first quarter, and then it just went away at halftime. They just couldn't make a shot in the second half, and they went on into overtime, and they were shut out in overtime. And you can't... You can't be shut out in any portion of a game, let alone overtime where you need to score to win. I mean, it was tied, and they got outscored 13 to nothing in overtime, so that's not good. And I think a lot of that has to do with how young they are, though. And I think there's a good takeaway from this game is the fact that they started off so hot. They showed they have potential. Um, there's growth with three freshmen starting. So I think there's um, potentially growth. And I think in the next game against Allegheny, they can win. Allegheny wasn't very good last year, 6-19 and overall. They're only, they only lost one significant senior from last year who led the team in rebounds in Madison Caulfield. So I think this is a game that Waynesburg will come out. If they come out strong and finish strong, they can easily win against Allegheny. And then going into the Barron tip-off tournament against Mount Union, it'll be challenging. Mount Union was good last year, 15-11. and 11, And um, 
Most of those wins came in their conference, so they had 12 wins in their conference, three and five outside of conference. So it'll be a game that Waynesburg may have a chance to win. It'll be challenging. They are a good team, and Waynesburg, if they can finish, they can beat anyone, I think, for the most part. Um, some players to look forward to, Erin Joyce, she has a separated shoulder. So I'm not sure if she's going to play tomorrow or not, but that's something to look forward to because if she's not playing, I think she's the best three-point shooter on the team, and that would be big. We'll see what happens as the Jackets continue to move through non-conference play on the court. Corey Fisher will be in next to talk about men's cross country. You're watching Jacket Sports Weekly. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Back here on Jacket Sports Weekly with men's cross country analyst Corey Fisher. And Corey, you know, the women's team had a much more successful uh, Mid-East regionals than the men did, but the men didn't do uh, so bad themselves and have a lot to look forward to heading into indoor season and then next fall for cross country as well. Yeah, the men finished 32nd out of 52 teams in Division Three Mid-East Regional Championship, and that was the motive for the men's team all year long. They always finish in the middle of the pack at a majority of these races, and that's a good thing you can look forward to with a sophomore class. Uh, again, this week, Matt Collum was the leading uh, runner with finishing 142nd out of 357 runners with a time of 28 minutes and 49 seconds. But that sophomore heavy class, six out of the seven jackets this week were sophomores with the one junior, Jared Scott, finishing fourth for the jackets. But as you said, when the sophomores going forward into next season, because that's what we have to look forward to now is next season, you have to hope that they will be positive going into their workout regimen in the off season because they have nothing but to do but look up. That sophomore class kind of dominated up from last season up to this season, and that's just going to, going to look up for the upcoming year. Now, if your uh, head coach, Chris Hardy, he really does a good job of developing and making sure there's depth in this team. Do you see that continuing in the future? Absolutely. In 2017, they finished sixth out of ten teams in the Pac Championship. This year, finishing fifth out of ninth. And I think that they are very positive as a sophomore class because they could see what they did this year. And they have to look at the girls who they compete with week in and week out, and they achieve top place in each tournament they go to. I think the men, they have a lot to look forward to in that sophomore class. As we, We've talked about the sophomore class all year long. I think we're going to continue about the junior class next year. They're going to dominate the pack next year. I really believe that. So you say we're going to dominate the pack next year. Uh, with that junior class, is the ceiling the PAC championship? Do you believe that these junior, well, now sophomores going to be juniors can get that done next fall? Absolutely. I think this year it had to be let's work towards the 2019 season because of Matt Collum and Matt Durgan. But now they achieve what they achieved this year in 2019 is their year as upperclassmen. Corey, all season long, thank you for your expertise on the men's cross country side. When we come back, Mitch Montani will be in studio to discuss the women's cross country team. Stay tuned. You're watching Jacket Sports Weekly. No more pencils, no more books, no more teachers, dirty looks. School's out for summer. What this place needed was better graduation rates. So we worked with schools like Henry Ford High, and now they're up 18%. To help us do more good this year, go to unitedway.org, because great things happen when we live united. Now it's time for the last analyst segment of the show today, and that's with our women's cross-country analyst, Mitch Montani. Mitch, an impressive performance from the women all season long. Yeah, 15th out of 47 at the most recent event, the Division III Mideast Regionals in Center Valley, PA. And this team just continues to be one of the most impressive teams on this campus. Johns Hopkins was the team that won the event, meaning Mideast Regionals. They had the top two runners on the day, so they take home first place. And the women's team unable to qualify for nationals, only the top seven teams in the event moving on to the national spectrum. But still, it was an awesome day for the Jackets just because they placed so high uh, in the Mideast Regionals tournament. And of course, they were led by a core of underclassmen that's going to continue to produce in the future. Aubrey Wingart, 
40th at a time of 24 minutes, 11 seconds, followed by Gloria Reed, the one-two freshman punch that the Yellow Jackets have had going all season long. Rebecca Voles, Nicole Shelton also producing as sophomores for this bunch. Aubrey Wingard even earning freshman all-region honors. So this is a core of very, very young runners that can continue to produce in the future as we move forward. And you look at years past um, with the three consecutive PAC championships, uh, last year was Angie Marchetti, and then this team, you know, the last three seasons has been anchored heavily by, you know, juniors or seniors or people that have departed already. Now it's different with Gloria Reed and Aubrey Wingart kind of emerging on the top. Do you see this success not only transfer uh, transferring to next season, uh, next fall, but in years to come, more PAC championships in the next several years? I think by the time all is said and done, Jack, we're going to be looking at a dynasty in this team. That's because they went through a transition period where they got younger and still won a PAC championship. They had to fight for it this year. They were a lot closer to Grove City, who finished in second place than they were the two years prior. But now they're being led by a core of young talent, even while watching these seniors graduate and Time to pay a small tribute to runners like Tegan Simonton and Elizabeth Trump. And Trump had one of her best races of her career at regionals, finishing sixth on the team with a time of just over 25 minutes. But these seniors are graduating and being taken over by young runners and still producing championships, which is absolutely impressive. Thanks, Mitch, for your insight. We always appreciate it very much. When we come back, Joe Smeltzer will sit down with Matt Durgan, the men's cross-country runner. You're watching Jacket Sports Weekly. Pretty much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly. I'm Joe Smeltzer here with sophomore cross country runner Matt Thurgan of the men's cross country team at Waynesburg. Um, so Matt, you guys finished your season this past Saturday um, at the sales for the regional um, invitational. Um, the team placed um, 32 of 52 teams, also placed 32nd last year. So uh, being last year, uh, you were a freshman, that was your first uh, regional meet. Um, what was different this year from either a team standpoint or an individual standpoint for you? Uh, I was definitely more prepared this, this season for what regionals would be like. It was a huge meet with, with a lot of teams. So I think we, I at least individually, kind of knew what to do um, there this year more than I did last year. Of course, the, the conditions on the course were kind of kind of poor, and the weather wasn't ideal. But I think, I mean, we didn't get any worse than last year, so I think that's a good, good start. So. All right, so you mentioned that you guys didn't get any worse, um, but you didn't really, at least standings-wise, uh, get much better either. Um, is that frustrating, just kind of uh, staying stagnant? Uh, yes, I think, uh, I mean, there's a lot of different uh, things that go on. And, uh, I mean, you have lifting, you have running, you have uh, just your mental state. Um, so I think, yeah, it is a little, it's a little frustrating, but... Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited with, with the way this, this season's turned out so far. Um, so. so from uh, an individual standpoint, um, your cross-country career is halfway done, uh, two seasons down. Um, so how have you evolved as a runner um, from where you are now to where you were at this point at the end of last season? I think last season I was a little more self-centered. I, uh, you know, finishing conference, had a good performance at conference. Uh, first on the team and so I kind of took that and uh, I guess ran with it and uh, so then coming into this season we really focused on uh, the pack running aspect and uh, just trying to get our times as close as we could together uh, which would really help us and I just kind of bought into that and I think I've become more of a leader become more of a, a teammate um, compared to where I was at last season. So uh, your class is uh, very talented uh, with people like yourself, Matt Collum, Matt Mansfield, Jordan Payne. Um, so now that you're going to be upperclassmen next season, 
Um, how do you think your class will kind of adjust for, for uh, getting into more of a leadership um, roles as uh, upperclassmen? I, I think we'll do uh, fairly well. I mean, there's, you know, five or six core guys that will be juniors next year. Um, depending on our who we get as recruits, I think we can we can really work with them and work with, uh, you know, the other sophomores and um, even some talented seniors. We can work together to to really have a have a good group next year. I think we can move up in the pack standings. Um, that's really the main goal for next year. Mm -hmm. um, so if we focus on, on leadership and, and training, accountability, we can, mm -hmm. I think we can see some major improvements. So the women's team obviously winning its third straight uh, pack championship, you've been on campus for two of those. Um, so I don't want to say um, irritated or annoyed would be a right word because obviously you're rooting for uh, the women's team to do well going to the same school. Um, but is it ever uh, in any way frustrating um, knowing that one team is getting all this attention, and rightly so, for the success they've had while you guys have kind of been uh, in the shadows a little bit um, of the women's team? Uh, yeah, it's a little frustrating at points. Uh, you know, just seeing their success is, is great, but um, we kind of we crave that too on the guys' side, so I think I think a lot of the guys on our team have kind of realized that and we, we want to see success as well because, you know, we haven't had fantastic performances, but I think we can use that as inspiration. We can see some improvements and hopefully get a lot stronger next year. Um, do you think the gap uh, between the men's and women's team um, is closing? Uh, do you think you guys are getting kind of closer um, to uh, that level of success that the girls' teams had? Yeah, I think uh, I think we will. Yeah, we're uh, again depending on who we have next year, what what training plans go on, and all of that. Uh, if it all works out together, I think we can really kind of move up towards their towards their level, and maybe one day be a championship uh, winning team for the pack. All right, thank you for your time, Matt. When we come back, Jack and Dylan will bring you Waynesburg University's top five athletes of the week here on Jack and Sports Weekly. Stay tuned. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> find yours at discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Jacket Sports Weekly. It's that time of the show where Dylan and I break down our top five. Mr. Cleland, let me hear yours. Uh, my number five is senior Logan Eller. On senior day, he had a pick six, went for 45 yards and a score against WNJ. He also had a tackle on uh, Saturday. Number four, the sophomore Andrea Orlowski. She led the women's basketball team with 18 points and had six assists, nine rebounds, and one three-pointer in the opening night loss to Carnegie Mellon last weekend. Mac Collum in third, the sophomore. He finished first for the Jackets on the men's cross-country NCAA Mideast Regionals with a time of 28.49, all-around solid performance and really contributed throughout the season for the Jackets. Number two, the senior, uh, Jake Evans, the wrestler. He was placed first last week at the Clarion Open and again, picking up right where he left off with a win on Saturday at the WJ Invitational. And number one, the freshman, Aubrey Wingart. We can't talk about her enough. She's done so much for the Jacket cross-country team and did it again this past weekend, 40th out of 341 runners at the Mideast Regionals. I think I counted three of my five, and yours are similar, but I have them in all different spots. Number five, I have Andrea Orlowski, one rebound shy of a double-double, 18 points, nine rebounds in the opener against CMU. She's got to be somebody that's going to step up for this very, very thin uh, Jackets women's basketball squad. Number four, I have Andrew Brinsick, senior on the football team. He was a leading tackler on Saturday against WJ. 13 total tackles, one tackle for loss in his final game in the orange and black. Number three, I have Chad Walker, who really picked up his game towards the end of the season. 15 carries for 102 yards, and he finished as the fifth leading rusher in the PAC. Number two, who you had, Aubrey Wingart, a uh, time of 24-11 at the Mideast Regionals. Uh, 40th place, a first in for the Jackets. She'll be somebody that needs to um, contribute heavily 
to the Jacket success in the indoor season. And number one, Jake Evans, heavyweight champ at W&J. He's going to be really fun to watch this season. So that's all we have here on Jacket Sports Weekly. For Dylan Cleland, I'm Jack Hillgrove. Join us next week where we break down your Jacket Sports. Good night. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.